Hey, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, today we're going to be doing a reading of Genesis 4. Okay, and Adam knew Harva, his wife, who had desired the angel, and she conceived and be a Cain. And she said, I have acquired a man, the angel of the Lord. And she added to bear from her husband, Adam, his twin, even Habel, which is Abel. And Habel was a shepherd of the flock, but Cain was a man working in the earth. And it was at the end of days on the 14th of Nisan, which is Passover, it's the uh, Passover, that Cain brought of the produce of the earth, the seed of cotton, an oblation of the things before the Lord. And Habal, Abel, brought of the firstlings of the flock and of their fat. And it was pleasing before the Lord, and he gave his countenance unto Habal and to his oblation. But to Cain and to his oblation he gave no countenance. And Cain was angered greatly. And the features of his face were downcast. And the Lord said to Cain, Why hast thou anger? And why are the features of thy face downcast? If thou, if thou doest thy work well, will not thy guilt be forgiven thee? But if thou doest not thy work well in this world, thy sin is retained until the day of the great judgment. And at the doors of thy heart lieth thy sin. And into thy hand have I delivered the power over evil passion, and unto thee shall be the inclination thereof, that thou mayest have authority over it to become righteous, or to sin. And Cain said to Habal his brother, Come, let us too go forth into the field. And it was that when they had gone forth into the field, Cain answered and said to Habil, I perceive that the world was created in goodness, but it is not governed or conducted according to the fruit of good works, for there is respect to persons in judgment. Therefore it is that thy offering was accepted, and mine not accepted with good will. Habil answered and said to Cain, In goodness the world was created, and according to the fruit of good works it is governed. There is no respect of persons in judgment. But because thy fruits of my works were better than thy, thine, my oblation, therefore thine hath been accepted with goodwill. And Cain answered and said to Habul, There is neither judgment nor judge, nor another world, nor will good reward be given to the righteous, nor vengeance be taken of the wicked. And Habul answered and said to Cain, There is a judgment, and there is a judge, and there is another world, and a good reward given to the righteous, and vengeance taken of the wicked. And because of these words, they had contention upon the face of the field, and Cain rose against Habul his brother, and drave a stone into his forehead and killed him. And the Lord said to Cain, where is Habal thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I the keeper of my brother? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of the bloods of the murder of thy brother, which are swallowed up in the sod, crieth before me from the earth. And now, because thou hast killed him, thou art cursed from the earth, which hath opened the mouth and received the bloods of thy brother from thy land from thy hand. When thou tillest the earth, it shall not add to give strength to its fruit from, for thee. A wanderer and an exile shalt thou be in the field, sorry, in the earth. And Cain said before the Lord, More heavy is my rebellion than can be borne. Yet is there, yet is there power before thee to forgive it. Behold, thou hast cast me forth today from the face of the earth, and from before thee. Is it possible to be hidden? And because I am a wanderer and an exile in the earth, 
any just one who findeth me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Behold now, any one who killeth Cain, unto seven generations vengeance shall be taken of him. And the Lord sealed upon the face of Cain the mark of the name great and honourable, that any one who might find him shall not kill him when he saw it upon him. The Jerusalem text says, If thou makest thy work good in this world, will it not make forgiven and remitted thee in the world to come? But if thou doest not make thy work good in this world, thy sin is retained until the day of the great judgment, and at the door of thy heart it lieth. Yet into thy hand have I delivered power over evil passion, and to thee may be dominion over it, to become righteous or to sin. And Cain said to Harbal his brother, Come and let us go forth upon the face of the field. And it was when they had gone out upon the face of the field, Cain answered and said to Habel his brother, There is neither judgment nor judge, nor another world. Neither is a good reward given to the righteous, nor will vengeance be taken of the wicked. Nor was the world created in goodness, nor in goodness is it conducted. Therefore it is that thy oblation was accepted with good will, and mine not accepted with good will. And Habel answered and said to Cain, There is a judgment, and there is a judge. There is another world, and a good reward is given to the righteous, and vengeance taken of the wicked. And in goodness was the world created, and in goodness it is conducted. But according to the fruit of good works it is conducted. Because my works were better ordained than thine, my offering was accepted with good will and thine was not accepted with goodwill. And as they two disputed on the face of the field, Cain arose against Hubble, his brother, and killed him. The voice of the blood of the multitude of the righteous, who were to arise after Hubble, thy brother. And Cain said before the Lord, My sins are greater than can be borne. Nevertheless, there is power before thee to absolve and to forgive me. And so Cain went out from before the Lord and dwelt in the land of the wandering of his exile, which had been made for him from before, as the Garden of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Hanok, and he builded a city and called the name of the city after his son Hanok. Jerusalem text says, And Cain went out from before the Lord and dwelt in the land of exile and wandering eastward of the Garden of Eden. And it had been before Cain slew Habel his brother that the earth multiplied fruits as the fruits of the Garden of Eden. But from the time that he sinned and killed his brother, it changed to produce thorns and thistles. And there was born unto Hanok Irad, and Irad begot Meshachil, and Meshachil begot Methuselah, and Methuselah begot Lamech, and Lamech took to him two wives, the name of the first Adar, and the name of the second Zila. And Adar bore Javil, he was the chief rab of all those who dwelt in tents, and are masters of cattle. Excuse me. Sorry. And the name of his brother was Javil. He was chief rab of all those who take part in song with the lal and the pipe. And Zila bear also to Vulcan, to Vulcan, the chief rab of all artificers who know the workmanship of brass and iron. And the sister of Tutu, to Vulcan was Nama. She was mistress of algae's and souls. Oh, excuse me. Paul, well, I'll call you back. I'm recording. Uh, yeah, no worries. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada, 
sorry, and Nama, she was the mistress of eulogies and songs. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zila, hear my voice. Wives of Lamech, hearken to my words. For I have not killed a man that I should be slain for him. Neither have I destroyed a young man on whose account my children should perish. For Cain who sinned and was converted by repentance had protection. And unto generations extended to him and to Lamech, the son of his son who hath not sinned, it is just that it shall be extended unto seventy and seven. And Adam knew his wife again at the end of a hundred and thirty years after Habil had been slain. And she bare a son and called his name Sheth. For she said, The Lord hath given me another son instead of Habil who Cain slew. And to Sheth she also bore a son. And he called his name Enosh. That was the generation in whose days they began to err and to make themselves idols and surnamed the idols by the name of the word of the Lord. This would be his name. That's chapter four. So there's a few things to go over in this. Um, if you've got the book of Jasher, it actually... Um, speaks of these similar things to what is in the Targum in the first chapter, especially regarding Cain and Abel and the sacrifice that they brought. So if you've got that, it's worth having a read through it, especially the first chapter. So it's interesting, going back to the beginning, that Adam knew Harva, his wife, who had desired the angel. And she conceived and be a Cain. The angel. Who's the angel? Or what's the angel? Now, it is known to a lot of scholars that read a lot of ancient texts that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil um, is the tree of life. It's in the Garden of Eden. But the, that what actually happened by taking the apple and eating it, it's also like, um, what do you call it? It's, it's, they say, and it has been written, and it's written here, that she desired the angel, which was Hasatan, and that they had um, created Cain. And see, the tree, a tree, it's like a family tree. It's your heritage. It's where you come from. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So this, which has been brought down, these stories through the generations, begin here at the Garden of Eden. And it is believed that Cain was not from Adam. He was from Hasatan. All related back to eating of the apple. Which is a huge thing to say. But I've researched it and read a lot, and I do believe that that is the truth. That there is a satanic line here in the world, which is still in existence now, and you will find lots of those people in high places in this world. That's why there is such chaos. And you see, then she lay with Adam and had his twin. So together, good and evil in the womb. It's the story of duality, which has always been from the beginning. Good and bad, light and dark. It's, it's just peace and chaos. It's us to work it out and to choose. But anyway, that's an insight that the Targum gives us about the heritage and the bloodlines. Now, when they gave the offering, it was on the 14th of Nisan, which is Passover, the Passover lamb. <clears throat> many, many, many years later, as we know, thousands of years later, Yahushua was the Passover lamb. So right at the beginning, they had a calendar. They had a month. They had days of the month. 
There is nothing new under the sun. Remember, he created the law, the Torah, 2,000 years before he created this world for humanity to dwell in. So, did he have a calendar back then? I believe so, because he is a god of order. And when he put the moon in the, the sky and the firmament and the sun, it was to physically show us his calendar and his order. And that's what we go by. So that's what they were doing. And of course, Abel gave his offering and Cain's was in Feria. And it talks about it here actually in Joshua. I'll just read briefly because I don't want to be too long. Um, Cain brought the fruit of the ground and Abel brought the firstlings of the flock from the fat thereof. So it was a good one. It was the best. Because it talks about the targum, do not eat the fat because the fat is his portion. That's the amount that, that's what you put on the altar and burn and those sweet aromas go up to Fuyawa, who is above us, above the firmament. So they even knew that back there. And Yahweh turned and inclined to Abel in his offering, and a fire came down from the Lord of heaven and consumed it. And unto Cain in his offering the Lord did not turn, and he did not incline to it, for he had brought from the inferior fruit of the ground before the Lord. And Cain was jealous against his brother Abel on account of this, and he sought a pretext to slay him. And in some time after, Cain and Abel, his brother, went one day into the field to do their work. And they were both in the field, Cain tilling and ploughing his ground and Abel feeding his flock. And the flock passed that part which Cain had ploughed on the ground and it sorely grieved Cain on this account. And Cain approached his brother Abel in anger and said unto him, What is there between me and thou, that thou comest to dwell and bring thy flock to feed in my land? And Abel answered his brother Cain and said unto him, What is there between me and thee? That thou shalt eat of the flesh of my flock and clothe thyself with their wool, wool, with their wool. And now therefore put off the wool of my sheep which thou hast had clothed thyself, and recompense me for the and recompense me for their fruit and flesh which thou hast eaten. And when thou hast done this will then go from thy land as thou hast said. And Cain said to his brother Abel, Surely if I slay thee this day, you will require the blood for me. And Abel answered Cain, saying, Surely God who has made us in the earth, he will avenge my cause, and he will require my blood from thee, shouldest thou slay me. For the Lord is the judge and arbiter, and it is he who will requite men according to his evil and the wicked man according to the wickedness that he may do upon earth. And now, if thou shouldest slay me here, surely God knoweth thy secret views, and will judge thee for the evil which thou didst declare to do unto me this day. And when Cain heard the words which Abel his brother had spoken, behold, the anger of Cain was kindled against his brother Abel for declaring this thing. And Cain hastened and rose up and took the iron part of his ploughing instrument with, with which he suddenly smote his brother and he slew him. And Cain split the blood of his brother Abel, or sorry, he spilt the blood of his brother Abel upon the earth and the blood of Abel streamed upon the earth before his flock. And after this, Cain repented, having slain his brother, and he was sadly grieved and he wept over him. And it vexed him exceedingly. And Cain rose up and dug a hole in the field wherein he put his brother's body and he turned the dust over it. And the Lord knew what Cain had done to his brother and the Lord appeared to Cain and said unto him, Where is thy brother that was with thee? And Cain dissembled and said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said unto him, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground where thou hast slain him. And thou hast slain thy brother and hast assembled before me and 
didst imagine in thy heart that I saw thee not, but knew all thy actions. But thou didst this thing, and didst slay thy brother for naught, and because he spoke rightly to thee. And now, therefore, cursed be thou from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand, and wherein thou didst bury him. And it shall be when thou till it, it shall no more give thee its strength as in the beginning. For thorns and thistles shall the ground produce, and thou shalt be moving and wandering on the earth until the day of thy, until the day of thy death. And at that time Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, from the place where he was, and he went moving and wandering in the land towards the east of Eden, he and all belonging to him. And Cain knew his wife in those days, and she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Enoch, saying, In that time the Lord began to give him rest and quiet in the earth. And at that time Cain also began to build a city, and he built the city, and he called the name of the city Enoch, according to the name of his son. Uh, for in those days the Lord hath given him rest upon the earth, and he did not move about and wander as in the beginning. And then it goes through the bloodline of um, So it's interesting in the Targum, you know, that um, Yahweh accepted his repentance and gave him a mark of the great name on his forehead where he was protected when nobody could kill him. Where does this often, where is this also in the Bible? When I think of that, I straight away think of Revelation, that in the end time, the Lord's remnant will also have his name on their forehead, where they will too be protected and that they will not be uh, allowed to die. So even though Cain was of a wicked bloodline, firstborn of Hasatan, and he murdered, God still gave him forgiveness. He still, there was always, um, he had to pay the price for what he did, which of course was the thorns and the thistles and hardship, and he had to leave where he was living. He had to leave his mother and father. So he lost his mother, father, and brother all at the same time. Interesting that he had married, so there were other people living in the world at the time. God created Adam and Eve, but he did actually create other people as well. And it, it explains it more as we go on into Genesis. It talks about that. So there is forgiveness for all, and he gives us um, the ability to choose righteousness or unrighteousness. And he also sees and knows everything that we do, like he saw everything that happened with Cain. Even though Cain denied it, Yahweh knew. He knows everything. So that's worth mentioning as well. Yeah, so next time we're going to read chapter five. So, all right, blessed be his holy name. <laughs>